actually my inspiration for getting a divorce. You are a god of men, and I wanted to appreciate you for the public service that you provide to all of us men out here. Tom, you're the, the greatest. You're the truth. I always say Tom like this is the truth. That's it. Damn That's straight. It. Tom, you are so right. You are so right, and I, I should have listened before. I got to tell all my boys out Hail Mary work. I've been there, done that, bought t-shirt, man. That stuff works. Tom, I, I preach your word all the time, brother, and I got to say, man, if we can get more fellas listening to you, we can get these women, uh, you know, in line where they need to be. I'm an architect in L.A., and I had a secretary in my office who uh, came in one day with a ring on her finger, and I said, you know, congratulations on the engagement. And she explained to me how it was the chastity ring, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to say it only took about five seconds for the panties to come off, and the chastity ring stayed on the whole time. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much good it did, except for it was my trophy, you know? I got a promise ring when I was, like, 14 years old, and I'm 26, and the promise ring was, like, long gone. The promise was broken before I even had it. <laughs> I just had something to add to uh, the classic DTB thing. Uh, you know, if any, any woman ever doesn't trust you or wants you to change your car or your house, you could just say NMP, NMP, not my problem. And if any woman gives you a reason to say NMP, the next logical step would probably be DTV. There are a lot of men out there that are gullible and they believe what a woman says. And I'm glad that you have a show that actually educates men on what they need to do because they obviously don't know. Did she get and, pregnant? Uh, yeah, she got pregnant all right. I got uh, rid of it. We got rid of it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah, lucky me. Did you dump well, her after that? Of course. <laughs> of course, man. How did she react to that? And then I shut the phone. Ah, I, don't want to hear I love that. Um, you know, if they if they don't cry hysterically and uncontrollably, I haven't done my job. She's having your baby. What a lovely way of saying how much money she's taken from you. Oh my god, I know it's so bad. I just. Uh. I don't know about anyone else, but if you gave me the kind of money that Vince is getting paid, I'll let you strap a midget on my back that can boo me every five minutes. <laughs> I got the line that you absolutely have to use on your woman if she starts giving you some stuff. You sit back and you say, hey, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> every single time. They don't even know what to say. The sex feels good. The world needs to take sex less seriously and find, you know, better ways to have it. And if you want world peace, you know, bang the guy next to you right now. You know, just go up to him for no reason. Don't ask his name. Don't ask if he's got a family. Just have sex with him. The world will be a better place. Tom, she hates my car. Absolutely hates it. It's because I spend more time with this than I do with her. But and, you, and, and by the way, you love it more than you love her. Oh, hell yeah. It's reliable. Unlike, you know, most of the women that I've known. <laughs> From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Shut up. Are you serious? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different con of the radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 800 5-800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything that we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. As long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, 
our screener, our tool of ignorance, Dean J. D'Amelio, who knows his way around a Louisville slugger and has a criminal record to prove it. He will proceed to bat a thousand on your head if you call in here and you don't sound like you can hold the nation spellbound. So if you think you can get through that very rough introduction, then by all means give it a shot. Call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Kristen on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good. Listen, first time listener, never heard you before. I've got two, uh, like grown adult kids. I've got a son, 26, ex sergeant in the Marine Corps. Thanks. You're wonderful. I've got a daughter, 23. I know she listens to you. And I'm driving back from Palm Springs and turned on your radio station. I got to tell you, Tom, I'm blown away with. It, it, it just seems so irresponsible. I mean, I, I, I don't know completely what you stand for, but the fact that I've got this one gal calling in who's, quote, bisexual, totally irresponsible out there. Well, what exactly, is your, what exactly is irresponsible? Well, I think probably in lieu of AIDS and all of the other sexually transmitted diseases that she's out there calling you her second papa. And, hey, papa, talking about who's boning her. i got to tell you, that's kind of pervy, Tom. I mean, really, listening to your laugh, and if I'm thinking, oh, my God, if my daughter was talking to a guy like you on the radio about being boned by strangers, going out, getting like, hey, listen, if, if she... Well, what does it tell do you? That, your daughter's a fan of the show. What does that tell you? No, she's no, she's not a fan of the show. She's heard you, and she sat there, and she's argued with her brother before. Now, he is typical guy, 26, man's man. He's single, doing his thing. Two tours through Iraq. Honestly, I could care less if he goes out in the ASX all day long. But here's my problem, Tom. The fact that you're on the air, I, I mean, are you kind of creeped out with yourself? A How little so? Bit? How so? The fact that, I, you know, and I don't know you. I mean, you could be a really nice guy, but I guess I've got this, this guy in my mind. I'm, I'm figuring, you know, you're probably middle-aged. Probably living well. You, I, you sound articulate. You seem smart. But I think part of this has got to be a joke. I feel like you're preying on unintelligent people who In what really way? are fairly weak. They're fairly weak. And, and really talking about people who can't make up, can't even put a thought together. I mean, that you're kind of, I think you're kind of corrupting them in a weird way. I think you're giving them really bad advice. How so? Like what? Well, the fact that she calls you and and again, don't know you but you got a pervy laugh to me. I mean, you sound like a perv. And wait, 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 wait. You getting more sex because than I like sex? That makes me a pervert. There we go. There we go. She couldn't defend herself. She couldn't defend herself. You got a pervy laugh. Hey, I'm a red-blooded American male, and I like getting laid. And I make no apologies for it. Does that make me a perv? Perverts are into children. Perverts are, uh, they're at your back door, you know, uh, whipping it out. Those are perverts. Having a healthy interest in sex with somebody of the opposite sex, nothing perverted about it. Nothing. Nothing. That's your problem, lady. It's not my problem. And uh, your son is a fan and probably a disciple, too. What does that tell you? Huh? Oh, that's right. You hung up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number on wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Uh, I just want to say that today, or yesterday rather, marks the seventh anniversary of me actually listening to you or finding you because I was in Los Angeles during the 9-11 attack um, in Los Angeles closing a bond deal actually. And the first voice I heard when I woke up that morning was yours because um, you had made your way down to the station after the attacks to uh, get on the radio to 
uh, I guess, comfort the people of Los Angeles in this in that dire times. And to that day, I just had to listen to you from there on out because, uh, you know, you said a lot of dedication, and I respected that. And, you know, I, I respect a lot of things that you say. I, I know you say a lot of things that, you know, it's just, it's just what people – it's just what it is. It's the reality and what's the truth. And, um, you know, I, I'm in Sacramento. I podcast you now because I'm glad I found you because I've been listening to the past three years straight through podcasts. Wow. Since, uh, I don't have a, I'm, I, after being on hold for this long, I think I'm going to go back to remain part of that 90% of your audience that never calls. <laughs> never, um, and, you know, I'm, and through all those, I mean, everything that you say is true. You know, um, I have, you know, equal, you know, probably as much amount of success as uh, yourself, and it's afforded me, you know, people need to learn what you're saying and get accomplished what they need to accomplish. And But um, I respect you. as a, You're a very smart man, and, and I, I view myself as that too. And, you know, people who don't listen should just just – it's important to listen to other people who are successful to learn from them, regardless of whether or not you believe what they say or don't believe what they say, because you can always learn something from everybody. And But just wanted to say that after seven years, I finally decided I'd call you, mainly because when people were going to have to ask me, where was I during the attacks on 9-11, and I'm just going to have to... Uh, you're you're going to become synonymous in my mind with the past 9/11, but not in a bad way, but obviously just a good way. And I thank you for that. And I just thought I'd want to share that with you after seven years. Well, I'm so glad you did. I mean, that day I was on the air with a one-hour lunch break. I was on the air from 9:15 a.m. until 7 p.m. Yeah. So that's uh, ten hours. That's a long day. Yeah. And I and I was listening to you probably for the whole entire ten hours, mostly because you know it was a time of panic. We didn't know what we were going to do. I was <laughs> stuck in a rental car, so I got to listen to your show for a full ten hours. Um, I traveled to Los Angeles probably at the back then probably twenty times a year, and I caught your show every now and then, but never really listened to it. But after that day, uh, your commitment and you know. I think sometimes people don't real under, fully understand your dedication, which I do respect a lot. And it's a sign of great success that a lot of people need to show in order to be successful in life. Well, you have to love your job that much. I, I'm speaking seriously for a moment with you because uh, you've been serious with me. Um, you know, no matter how much I enjoy getting paid a big salary and uh, I like the perks that go with it. It always gets back to the same thing. I got into radio because on the day something happens, I need to have a microphone in front of me. I need to be at the radio station. I have to be there. Uh, it, it, but when I'm on vacation and big things start happening, it's very difficult for me to stay on vacation. And, in fact, about uh, 10 days ago, when the Sarah Palin story broke about her daughter being pregnant, I stepped out of a swimming pool and into a studio. Uh, to broadcast that day because I just couldn't sit home knowing people were talking about that and not being on the air. Uh, I, I see this is where you and I are different since I might be a Republican. Since well, <laughs> I, is, it has, since, no, this not, has it, nothing to do with being a Republican because, by the way, I'm in favor of gun rights. I'm in favor of fiscal conservatism, which, yeah. the, which the Republicans claim to be in favor of, but... A five hundred billion dollar budget deficit doesn't indicate fiscal conservatism to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to debate politics right now because that's not. No, I, I just in, in California, especially now that you see that the budget's not being passed. I just, I just prefer not to have the government spend my money. And I understand that during, in a time of war they did, but you know, hopefully we're not going to be in a war that much longer. Yeah, but, but they also had bridges to nowhere and earmarks and all this other stuff going on. Uh, and and the Republicans for six of the eight Bush years were running everything, and they were spending money like drunken sailors, and you know it. Yeah, I agree. And, and so, you know, the reality is Republicans are not for smaller government. Democrats are definitely not for smaller government. Mm -hmm. They're not for getting the government off your back. They both want the government on your back. 
Uh, I personally believe that either McCain or Obama, uh, people think that things are really going to change. Um, probably well, not. I, I don't change. believe things are really going to change. Well, here's what's going to change. If Obama becomes president, we get out of Iraq. I agree. I, and, I support it. And, by the way, i got to tell you something else, having done a lot of traveling. You know, I know a lot of people love calling conservative talk shows and saying, who cares what the rest of the world thinks? But you know what? I, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have countries not hating us. Uh, given that I go, I travel abroad just about as much as you, and I fully agree with you. And I, I go over there and I see exactly what you're talking about, and I agree. And, um, you know, being in California, um, the presidency doesn't really concern me that much. The voting for the presidency doesn't concern me that much because my vote pretty much got wiped out anyways. <laughs> wow. We I mean, pretty much years, got 60% for, will vote for, for Barack, and which I understand and I accept. I just, I learned to accept reality. <laughs> for years, they declared a winner before the polls closed in California, so our vote didn't really matter. <laughs> At least they've stopped doing that. Yeah, that's true. But it's important to be in, you know, understand, you know, what reality will bring and regardless of what we hope that these people will do for us. And well, my whole thing is I don't care if they're Republicans or Democrats. I want people smarter than me, smarter than me. And you can't look at Sarah Palin and tell me she's smarter than you. No, I, I stopped worrying about that stuff. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I wouldn't say necessarily that Barack is smarter than anybody else, but then I well, would never say that I am either. I got to so. tell you, you may not agree with his opinions, but the guy is well educated and he's smart. Yes, he's a successful man, and I, even I believe that I can learn a lot from him. Just and one way to get some respect to the world would be to have a smart guy running this country for a change, even if you don't agree with his politics. Oh, I agree. I agree that you should find a way to uh, appreciate and learn and grow your in any situation. So. We, we we have had the Will Ferrell character from old school running the country long enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but but we're gonna need. I mean, we're, what are we gonna do in all those movies now? We can't use him as a iconic uh, <laughs> figure for our com for our comedy. I mean, I guess I guess someone's gonna have to come up with a new idea. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. What exactly are you in control of? Pretty much going to control of the whole household for that way. You know, really? Right? So when she's nagging you, how could she nag you if you're in control? I uh, tell you the truth, but, you know, it's a real hard question to answer, you know? Yeah, yeah, because you're lying to me. Let me tell you something, pal. If you're in control of everything, here's what you do. You say to her, didn't you forget who's in control of everything here, bitch? The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Likas. Yo! At 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Wide open telephones. On the Tom Likas Show. Joe, hello. Joe? Yes, I'm here, Tom. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I have a question for you. Earlier in the week... You gave out eight words that a man hopefully can expect from his wife. And I'm going to repeat them, and I know you know them, but for all the listeners out there that may have forgotten. Stay thin, short hair, sex anytime. No, no, long hair. Long hair. I'm, I'm sorry, you're right, long hair. And shut up. So my wife and I, we've been married 13 years, and we have three kids. And i got to tell you, if I knew then what I know now, it would be a lot different. So I'm a little late in the game. My question is, I, I obviously had to pass this off as my own thought process to my wife. And I came home that evening, and I said, you know what, honey, I think I found the cure to all of our ills. And I told her, basically, there's eight words that I've come up with uh, that will, if you can do these for me, I will be your lap dog, basically. So the first one, of course, is the big one, and that's stay thin. And my wife, since we've been married, she's put on at least 75 pounds. Now, she's a six-foot-tall woman, and I'm a six-foot-tall guy, so it hides well, but nevertheless, she's nowhere near as slender as she was when I met her. And conversely, neither am I. So basically, when I went through that, she was receptive to it, uh, right up to the point where she said, well, you know what, you've put on weight, too, and that's a double standard. 
And, Tom, I was like a deer frozen in headlights. I had no idea how to respond to that. So I figured I'd call you and say, how do I respond to that so I can come back to her and say, this is the solution to the problem. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, are you like most couples? You make more money than she does? Uh, I, I am a six-figure income guy. She is a stay-at-home mom. She's been a stay-at-home mom for eight years. There you go. Well, my response to that is simply this. You're the one who makes her life possible. Very true. That's, that seems overly simplistic, though, doesn't it? But it's true. I agree. <laughs> i got to get her to agree to that, though. Yeah, but you don't have to get her to agree to it. That's the way it is, and that's that. You know what? I, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's very simple. It's very direct. And you know what? You're absolutely right. It's, it's I'm providing for you. Therefore, you need to do this for me. That's pretty much it, right? That's it in a nutshell. Wow. Okay. I I, I, got, I got frozen when she if she doesn't recorded. if she doesn't want to work out and look good for you, she's more than welcome to start putting that resume out there. Very true. Very true. Now I took it upon myself. I'm an ex athlete, a baseball player. Never made it to the major leagues, but I was always in pretty good shape. But of course, now that I'm married, what happens? You pack it on. You're not motivated because. You're married, right? And right. The prob you know, the problem now is I got to lose some weight because I don't see her motivated enough over the last 13 years to go stay in shape. And she told me when, when she said, when we have the, she said, when I have the opportunity to stay at home with our first daughter, and we ended up having twins, a boy and a girl, so that's three kids, eight years old and two three year old twins. She said, if I get to stay at home, I will work out every day. And, Tom, I called her on it the other night, and I said, listen, you've stayed at home now for eight years, and I've yet to see you in the gym. And her response was, well, it's tough. I can't get the kids there. i got too much other things going on. And I said, you know what? When you get to stay at home with the kids every day while I go out and slay dragons in the workplace, that is play. And I wouldn't mind going out and playing every day and having you go do the things that I have to do and put the pressure on me. Uh, put me in an early grave. By the way, I'll bet you'd be getting your cardio. I bet you'd be uh, doing uh, some push-ups at home. I'll bet you'd be uh, finding ways to work out if you had free time. Well, and see, that's the thing, too. I mean, guys are vis uh, stimuli stimulated by visual, correct? As yes. Gym, I'm going to see a woman who's taking care of herself, who's toned, right, who's, ta who's, who's presenting the proper image to her guy, okay, and I don't see that taking place with my wife. And it's well, keep in mind, that. most of the people you meet at the gym are unattached because uh, people are either trying to meet somebody or they just split up with somebody and now they want to meet somebody else. Very rarely are they going to the gym when they're hooked up with someone. You know, I, I, this, what, this happened to me about two weeks ago when I went to the gym because I thought I'd better start working out if I'm going to open my mouth about putting on weight, right? Yeah. And I met a lady at the gym and I do have my wedding ring on. And we, she's on the elliptical next to me, and I had my iPod on, so I'm cranking up the tunes, working out. And somehow we struck up a conversation, and I think it was a easy conversation because I think she saw the ring on my finger and figured, no harm, no blood, no foul, the guy's married, it's okay. And she asked about the ring. She said, hey, you know what, you're married? And I said, and this was my response. N I, I was. I said, I haven't been able to take it off. My wife died of cancer a year and a half ago. And I got to tell you, Tom, that got me a lot of attention from that lady from the, you know, the next couple of times that I've been in that gym. And I tell her I work out at this hour on these days. You know, and this is only two weeks old. And I thought, you know what, I've got somebody who's in shape who has a somewhat what I call an interest in me. And I figure, you know what, I have motivation now to go to the gym because somebody's taking care of themselves and somebody can put some attention onto me that I'm not getting at home. Is that wrong or is that right? No, no, but the point is you're the one who goes out every day. And by the way, if you weren't working so hard to pay uh, for her and the kids the two of you created, probably at her behest, uh, <laughs> then uh, you would have plenty more time to be working out. Very true. Very true. And I'd probably be the guy I was 13 years ago. <laughs> Tom, exactly I appreciate right. your advice. I think you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call. Thanks for taking it. Bye-bye. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wow. So many of these calls. Here's, uh, wow. Let me get Tammy on here. Tammy, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. So 
I got an interesting story. I'm a I'm a new listener. A uh, friend from work turned me on, and it's I listen to you every single day now while I'm at work, which is kind of interesting because I sit on the phones all day at work, and I have you in my other ear, so it's kind of an interesting day. But uh, the reason I was calling was I was in a relationship um, over a year ago for about nine months, and um, everything was okay. You know, I loved him, whatever. It happened. Well, we broke up after a really bad fight after he had a little bit of an anger problem. So we broke up, and it has now been over a year. Um, at the end of June, it was a year. So um, to this day, he still calls me. He tells me he loves me. He misses me. He wants to be back together with me. He, for, you know, he's a changed person. He will do whatever he can to be with me, and he will never give up. And it has been over a year for a relationship that didn't even last a year. I've wow. told him no. I've told him it's not going to happen. I've been over it many a times, and it seems to not get through his head. What well, do I do? <laughs> well, Donnie, <laughs> he's your ex. That's what I keep saying. You don't have to do anything. He keeps calling, and he keeps he will not leave me alone. Well, darling, stop taking his calls. Which is easier said than done. No, it's very easy. Do you have caller ID? Yes. Do you know when his call is coming in? Yes. Let it go to voicemail. When I pay attention to it, but and I have, but it, it it's a persistent. And if I if I pick it up and I talk to him and I tell him it's not going to happen and I put it into his head again for the tenth time, it, he'll stop calling me for about two months. But if I don't answer, it's constant call. Well, well then the, what you can do is you can uh, either call the telephone company and complain about harassing calls, which are illegal, and you've got the caller ID, so you've got the proof that it's this person, or you could change your phone number. Sounds like the harassing phone calls would be a little easier than changing the phone number and dealing with all the friends, too, huh? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'd be, you know, I'd, what I would do is uh, file a complaint with the police department. Uh, harassing phone calls are illegal. Okay. So file a complaint. Okay. Well, I just I don't understand it. I don't know. I I, I didn't do anything special. I, I was no, I was just another ordinary girl. But it seems like um, it's it's. I don't know. I thought I thought it was. You know, everybody says it's the girls that get all uh, depressed and, you know, obsessive over the ex-boyfriend and stuff. And yet it seems like it's the opposite way around. But, Tom, this isn't the first time this has happened to me. I have another ex-boyfriend who I dated for a year and a half who is still calling me, telling me. And this has been over three years since we broke up. Well, uh, darling, uh, again, uh, the reason they keep calling is because you keep answering. Well, what did I do to make them even want to call me again? Who cares? <laughs> You know what you did to make them want to call you? You what? keep taking their calls. I don't get it. I was a bitch to them. I broke Again. their heart. But then, then you are sending mixed signals by taking their calls and talking to them. Being a bitch? No, taking their calls. When I the I call, when I take their call, I say, "Look, you need don't to get it through your take, head. It's never going to happen." They just want to get a rise out of you. If you stop taking that, by the way, this is what the phone company will tell you about harassing phone calls. Okay. Stop taking them. <laughs> I guess so. I guess I just need to get over it. I just why can't you resist picking up the phone? I don't know. I I don't know. I. I, I don't know. I wish I had an answer to that. I mean, I that's I your did, problem, just... and you are causing the problem to get worse. No, I agree. So I stop agree. doing it. I'm going to have to because it's it's been a year and a half, and you, you would think it would stop, but it just doesn't. And so I'm going to have to take charge of the situation. That's right. Well, Tom, I, I thank you, and I just want to let you know, you know, I love your show. I, I may not agree with everything you say all the time when it comes to certain things, but I laugh at it, and I get a, such a kick out of it. And I, I like how you put people in your place. You put me in my place, and you can put anybody else in their place. Tammy, thank you for the call. Tom Likes. Likes.
1-800-5800-TOP. All these guys out there listening, you got to pay attention to this stuff. It, it is not just lip service. Your lives will be screwed. The Tom Likey Show. Tom Life Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Okay, here we are. <laughs> oh, it just goes on and on. Wide open telephones. By the way, uh, for those of you... Uh, for those of you heading home in Southern California, I'd be remiss if I did not mention this, but uh, there has been still another Metrolink crash, this time in Chatsworth. And um, this one has at least three people dead, and it says here, scores injured. This is a big one, and it's in Chatsworth. And you uh, should pay attention to this as you're heading home. It is uh, near the intersection of uh, Topanga and the 118 Freeway, which is the Simi Valley Freeway, the Ronald Reagan Freeway. Call it what you will. So my recommendation to you is avoid that area if you possibly can. And uh, I have to imagine also the Metrolink trains are screwed up. The 118 is screwed up. Topanga is screwed up. All of it is screwed up. And... Uh, I don't know how this keeps happening, but uh, we're going to have to do something about this here in SoCal. No doubt. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We continue with your telephone calls here. Let's say hi to Julio on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Julio. What's going on? Not much. I had a quick question for you. I listen all the time. I'm in San Diego, and obviously I don't get your show anymore. And so now I have to podcast it, which made me even more loyal of a listener, because now I listen to every hour <laughs> all the time. And lately I've noticed that you've been saying, um, you've been saying half past the hour and so on every once in a while. And I know you do everything for a reason, so I'm wondering what made you start saying that. Uh, it's to remind people that while other stations run news, and traffic, and other happy horse crap at the bottom of the hour... We recently reduced our commercial load, and while other stations are going to news and other interruptions, we keep going with calls. That's why. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. We just added another two minutes of content to every hour. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Are they you... always say that, you know, now more of this than ever before, whatever. But in this case, it's documented. We we have two more minutes every hour. Yeah, I noticed that when I download the podcast, it tells me it skips the commercial, so... I noticed it used to be like 38 minutes, now it's 40, so it is true. I know, I know you're telling the truth. That's why we tell people that, because many stations at half past the hour uh, go off and do something else. Okay, I thought maybe you were making fun of something and I wasn't catching it or something. No, no, this is actually uh, to remind everybody that uh, uh, that we have more content now on the air than any talk show in the afternoon. Any sports talk show, any general talk show. We now have more content than anybody. That sounds good. Hey, Tom, another question. Um, I was wondering, um, what can I really do to get your show back in San Diego? I know you always say uh, go to your local station, but is there, I mean, does that have to be a, a CBS-owned station? No, no, of course not. Uh, you can just carry your, your show. It doesn't have to be Anybody like can do a deal. Anybody can do a deal. And you've got stations in San Diego like KFMB and Kogo. Uh, lots of stations that do talk radio there. And there are other stations, who knows, maybe they would do talk radio if they could put together a decent lineup. So, so then it we would have to be a station that's willing to just switch over to all talk? Or no, they don't, like they don't have to, but certainly I think that's, that's the best. But uh, we're on a few music stations, too. Okay, yeah, because you name mostly AM stations. Well, I'm naming stations that do talk radio. Uh-huh, yeah, I know. Right now, the only FM talk radio in San Diego is an all-sports station that's simulcast from the AM. Okay, yeah, because I'm really, I really want to get together some and and you know get get that programming down here. It sucked when you went away, uh, like a year and a half or so ago. And we were replaced by something that didn't do demonstrably better than than the station did. That station sucked. As soon as that happened, I took it off my preset buttons. Yeah. 
I never listened to it again. And I remember the day when you went away. It was after you came to Canes in San Diego. And yeah, I and like they always do. They squeeze one last appearance. They milk the cow one more time. Yeah, uh, I then they take us And I saw you live, and then next thing you know, the following Monday, it was gone. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what was yeah. going on. Yep, and I, I called know. them that minute. I called them where's Tom, and they said, oh, it got to change format. You wouldn't have it anymore, but I was clueless of what to do. So really, I want to try to get it back here. So I'm going to start calling and emailing or writing letters to whoever I need to do that to get you back down here. I'm, I know I'm not alone because I've heard it before from other San Diegans that call. We have many, many calls and emails from San Diegans who listen to us online or they listen to us on the iPhone or they listen to us on podcasts through iTunes or whatever. Yeah, that's what I have to do is always one day before I was download, you know, but I'm always one day behind, sometimes even less if I had some stuff to do where where I can't get to it. But um, so then when I want to call in, I always have to wait till Friday to see if I can get through and right. talk about previous topic. But it's nice that you do this, the Friday show because it gives us a chance to do that. Appreciate it, Tom. I won't take your time. Uh, can you please take me out um, Mexican style? Mexican style, I certainly can. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom David on the Tom Likas show. Hello, how you doing, Tom? Doing great. Got a question for the professor. I've been dating this girl for two years, and uh, she came over here from Mexico on a tourist visa, and she was supposed to go back, but she stayed over here. And uh, I've been dating her for two years. She's a good girl, and um, I've been having serious thoughts about marrying her. And my question to you is, is there a prenuptial agreement for people that you sponsor to come over here? Well, a prenuptial agreement is between any two people getting married. Oh, really? Oh, cool. That's the only thing that was holding me back. Um, but are you just doing this to to make her legal? No, I I really want to get. I I want to stay with her. I don't. I mean, it's nice that she's legal and everything. It'd be nice. For her, you know, she wants to see her folks back in Mexico, but um, I want to stay with her. So that that's the reason why I want to do it. But yeah. I do want to get a prenuptial agreement. I'm not going to get married without one. I'm 35 years old. I've never been married. Um, I have one kid, and she's good to my, my daughter. So I don't know. I was really thinking about getting married with her. It's, we've been together. For a while, and we're comfortable with each other. Um, that's what I. That's what my main concern is. I heard that you had a uh, pretty much sponsor somebody to come over here, and you were responsible for them financially for pretty much I, at least ten years. I ten heard. years. Well, that's correct. Oh, that is correct. That um, is correct. So if we divorce, so like let's say five years from now. For five years, I have to play alimony. No, here's here's how it works. When you sponsor somebody's green card, mm -hmm. they can't apply for public assistance for at least 10 years. The idea being people shouldn't be able to come in here from other countries and immediately apply for welfare. Okay. So it, they, they sign a piece of paper that says that they're not going to apply for welfare, food stamps, or any kind of public assistance for the first 10 years. Okay. So what happens if they need assistance? Well, they're coming to you. Oh. Up, up to $16,000 a year. <clears throat> but that's it, right? I mean, uh, there's no, if we do a prenuptial agreement and she agrees to it, we get married, I mean, the, pretty much the maximum she can milk out of me would be 16000 up to the 10th year, and then that'd no, be it. No, no, no. Uh, well, it depends on how you write the prenup. Are you going to say in the prenup that there's no. Uh, spousal support, no community property. Yep. Yeah. I, I plan to go all the way. And, I don't believe in that. I, why should I well, marry I, somebody and take care of them? And then what if, what if it doesn't work out for whatever reason? And and then it doesn't work out. And then now I got to pay half of whatever I made and and give her half of everything I own. No, I, I have I have dated I have dated Mexican women. Do does she have any idea what you're planning? Does she have any idea of the prenup? Right. I I have told her my beliefs, and uh, she she has agreed, but I haven't told her I'm going to do, do a prenuptial agreement. But 
if she doesn't agree with it, then that's fine, and I'm not going to do it. But, you know, I'm not going to budge on that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be really young. Know. Good for you, but I'm telling you what, she's going to be very upset when she's, wait, first of all, um, is her English up to snuff? Can she read a prenuptial agreement or does she need to have it translated or what's the deal? I'll, I'll translate it myself because I'm, no, I'm no, bilingual. No, 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 no. When you do a prenuptial agreement, in order for it to be valid, she has to have her own attorney. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Huh. So... You just pay whatever you know, whatever the cause. Let's say it be three hundred or five hundred. You have to pay your attorney, and uh -huh. and most cases you'll end up paying her attorney too. Okay. Who will not be the same person? So I'm talking like it would probably be around a, a thousand, probably to hire. Oh, two. I I think more than that. Oh, more. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I think it's worth it. It's like it's like you said. It's an insurance. It's, well, you know, I, I think I, you can't get married without it. If you can't afford to do a prenup, you can't afford to get married. That's how I see it. Yeah, because everything's fine and dandy right now. But who's to say if she goes back to her country, things uh, happen? I don't, you know, I don't. Anything can happen. She could cheat on me. I could cheat on her. Or whatever. Anything can happen, and I don't want to be responsible for her forever or for any amount of years. It's not fair. So, now, that's so I mean, cool. theoretically, theoretically. She could get alimony from you, and then she could apply for public assistance and get that from you too. But not without, not with the prenuptial, right? Well, assuming that you write a prenuptial that stands up, that is held as valid. That's true. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.